Oh, this new Highly Suspect album, it's not good. A highly Suspect is a band out of Massachusetts, and they've been active for a little more than half this decade now, and their past couple of records, they were just pretty much a straight alternative rock band. Sure, maybe their last album was a little overproduced, but there was certainly nothing that was super standout about much of what the band was doing. The one weird, totally unexpected uh, thing was that they were signed to 300 Entertainment, which is primarily known as a rap label. I mean, some of the biggest artists on there include Young Thug, Megan Thee Stallion, T Grizzly, Reggie Snow is on there too, Betty Wap was on there as well. Again, outside of that, nothing particularly about the band's sound that would make you go wow, or would make you stop in your tracks. I know that certainly was the case for me. Not amazing, but certainly not terrible. And I do get a lot of requests to listen to their stuff, try it out. So of course the band comes out with another record. I am curious to try it. And it is easily one of the worst things I've heard in 2019. And it's unfortunate because I could really tell they were shooting for this more mainstream, widely appealing record where creatively so many different ideas and sounds and even features coalesce onto one very unlikely project. I mean, this thing features not only Young Thug, but also Gojira, the metal band Gojira, which I, I don't think any modern popular record has ever done such a thing. So I can at least commend the band on the variety and versatility that they are sort of shooting for on this project, but God, are the performances, production, songwriting, and instrumentals on this record terrible. And given just how many ideas or sounds the band are shooting for on this one, it's like each track is doing its own type of terrible. It's like really a, a, a torture chamber with different sections and pathways and obstacles to make you unhappy. From the opening track, Fly, which was almost like a test of my sympathy because, yes, there are some serious and personally painful issues addressed on this song. The issues of suicide, the issues of abandonment, substance abuse issues too, but the instrumental is unbearable. It's like a combination of AJR, Imagine Dragons, and that depressive little peep angle. The lyrics are so painfully sophomoric and just surface level, they don't really require one to think about what's being said all that much. Everything is put so plainly it becomes almost excruciating, like, I wish I had someone to give me some love, I wish I had someone to give me a hug, I'm sick of the liquor and sick of the drugs, I wish I could just stop fucking up. Which could be a genuine expression of sadness and a cry for help, something that uh, Johnny, the frontman of the band, actually needs. But uh, it's, it's still not really playing out all that well in song, nor do I really care for the tone of the track making this emotional suffering that he's going through into, like, I don't know, a synthified arena rock anthem. The following track, 16, doesn't offer much better material with the opening lyrics and the hook. It took me 16 years to find ya, one second to love ya, seven years to hold ya, one minute to lose ya. <laughs> and what's even worse is the singing switch up on this track. The vocals do not really sound much like the vocals on the intro or many of the other tracks here either. Uh, I would describe the singing on this one as like a combination of Darius Rucker from Hootie and the Blowfish and uh, Anthony Kiedis of Red Hot Chili Peppers. We are really seeing those terrible mashes of the most cliched sounds of the 90s all over this project. Later into the lyrics, we get these laments about a puppy love essentially being done, being over, things changing, but uh, poetically it does not really improve. Can't say I'm all that crazy about the overblown, very dramatic instrumental either. Even more excruciating is the following Freak Street, where we get one of the most garish vocals on the entire record. Uh, be the shit you talk about or shut your stupid drama mouth. It's sunny out, I'm running out. Shut your stupid drama mouth? What? what? And why does the instrumental sound like such a cheap piece of just overly touched up synth pop? It, it is terrible. Uh, it gets even worse with what I guess you could call maybe a rap verse in the second half, where uh, Johnny's vocals get particularly goofy. <laughs> 
Oh god, the, the lyrics on the album just get worse and worse and worse. Uh, yeah, I'm an outlaw baby with a Southpaw. view. Donald's a bitch and Vlad Putin is too. What? This is like some really bad faux edgy rap metal from the 2000s type of writing here. I don't fucking care if you fucking care. No one's gonna live forever, so you better be prepared. Not gonna lie, that part's pretty death grips. But it's really that terrible, ultra-commercial, alt-rock, soaring chorus quality of it that makes it feel so cheap and um, almost disingenuous. Because no, after this record, I really don't honestly buy into highly suspect's apathy. I don't think that they don't care. There is nothing left field, extreme, or out there enough about this record to make me feel that. All this album serves us is cheap, profitable, acceptable rock rebellion. The track Upper Drugs is another track about drugs. It gives us uh, hints of grungy guitars. It's very Cobain inspired. I would say a Cobain ripoff at points. The whole instrumental feels like an amalgamation of all these 90s sad rock cliches, and they're pieced together into this mostly disingenuous Frankenstein monster, with even the final moments of the track sounding like something out of Soundgarden's Super Unknown. The track Tetsuo's Bike is one of a few cuts here that is just a, an instrumental interlude. Uh, this one is so crummily produced and assembled, you can essentially take a screenshot of Fruity Loops and just paste over it in big impact font. Uh, music production is my passion, and that would be this track. After this, we start getting some of the album's key features, like the... Uh, uh, cut here with Young Thug. Gotta say, Thugger went way harder on this track than he needed to. His vocal here is easily the best vocal on the entire record. It's pretty much a big synth back trap ballad that is way too dramatic for words. Melodramatic, I mean. Things get even worse when Johnny starts performing as a terrible Johnny, which I guess is an alias of his that he does on record. We get these really bad, unbearable ad-libs in the background of, uh, what is it, Dirt Boy, Dirt Life, Dirt Bike. <laughs> so, so many ideas that just should have not come out of the studio. We then get into the track with Gojira on it, SOS, which uh, is a hard transition, a very hard transition, as the previous cut is pretty mellow. Uh, the intro, I imagine, kicks off with Gojira dropping in with these thunderous, sludgy guitars and drums. It is super animalistic. Um, I would say way too animalistic for this record, as it is abrasive to the point where it sounds hideous and doesn't really fit in with anything else. What is even weirder is that immediately after this, Highly Suspect starts working in a song and these guitars that are a blatant Queens of the Stone Age ripoff, with even Johnny vocally sounding like he's just doing his best Josh Tommy impression. Like, this is literally the equivalent of Greta Van Fleet ripping off Led Zeppelin. And for whatever reason, on the chorus of this track, the way that it transitions into these super heavy, blown out guitars, the production suddenly becomes just so compressed it is unbearable. I'm just wondering what, what goes into the writing of these tracks, because for the most part, the songs so far, and, and really for the rest of the record, just sound like completely messy, sloppy, almost random combinations of all of these stale rock tropes from bands that, I mean, are super popular, really obvious that you're pulling from these groups. Like, it's, it's really actually distracting when there's a moment that sounds exactly like a Red Hot Chili Peppers song, when there's a moment that sounds exactly like a Nirvana song, when there's a moment that sounds exactly like a Foo Fighters song. After this, I think the record's unbearable qualities let up for just a, a little bit. Arizona is an acoustic ballad that, while not amazing, is not offensively bad. Juzo is a decent, uh, I guess, kind of very ephemeral uh, synthy interlude that doesn't really add up to much. And then The Silk Road with T Grizzly. Uh, I can at least say that, that this track features one of the better T Grizzly features I've, I've ever heard. I, I don't really care for much of what uh, uh, Johnny and Highly Suspect in general have done on this track, but hey, hey, Grizzly kills it. The song Taking Off is also pretty difficult to digest. It's um, maybe a very weak attempt at an industrial rock song with what sounds like these uh, kind of thin, crunchy, 
sampled guitars, it's a little Nine Inch Nails, it's still a little more Queens of the Stone Age. Some of the vocal harmonies feel vaguely Alice in Chains, and for the most part the song is not memorable, the lyrics are trash, the singing and production are mediocre as hell. Really the only thing that is maintaining my interest in this album past this point is just to see what gets ripped off next and how bad the ripoff is. I mean, the following track these days features these chunky, heavy alt-rock guitars that are very Weezer-esque. I would say even some of the singing and writing is pretty Rivers Cuomo inspired too. The final song, not the outro, but the song Snow White on the record is one of the weirdest combinations of ideas as there are elements that feel a little Foo Fighters inspired, especially the vocals, there are elements, especially the, the modern psych guitars on the track that are a little Lenny Kravitz inspired. I would say there are more Red Hot Chili Peppers vibes coming off of this track too. There's just not really a moment on this record, truly and honestly, where I feel like I am listening to highly suspect, deliver a sound that is distinct, undeniably them, everything is like a deja vu moment from something else, but done much, much worse. The last track, Nairobi, is pretty much a, a non sequitur, another moment that feels like, music production is my passion, and geez, um, what, what a sorry reflection of the state of, uh, of rock music. If this is even a rock album, I, I guess there are quite a few elements of rock music to it. Um, yeah, this, this was, uh, not gratifying. This was uh, thankless in the worst way. Uh, this highly suspect album was not good. <laughs>